Okay, uh, hello everybody. Good morning. Thanks for having us. So my name is Adenilson Cavalcante. I work for ARM. I'm based in San Jose office. And today we're gonna be talking about optimizing image, image decode for ARM. Or as I like to say, three generations of silicon thanks to Neon. Okay, so this whole story started with a question. What to optimize on Chromium? The issues that uh, you guys know is a really huge code base. There are just too many areas. And what could be actually helpful? Well, the answer is that up to these days, the bulk of content is still text and images. So I decided to start by having a look on images, specifically PNG. So PNG is a really cool uh, standard. As a matter of fact, it was the first W3C standard. It is a powerful format, it is uh, lossless, supports palettes, pre-filters, and also compression. And what, what I think is really interesting is that uh, libpng and zlib, they are kind of brothers, and they were both part of an heroic uh, effort back in the early 90s to provide access to people uh, both for data compression as also image compression. All right, so um, Mr. Parrot, I spent countless hours looking to this image, but it's a quite interesting PNG image because it has what looks like a complex texture. It's also uh, high resolution. It's transparent and has pre-filters. But just like in nature, uh, parrots, they may look the same, but they may be actually different depending on the encoder that you have used it. So uh, the original image was 2.7 megabytes. And if I used other uh, compressors or if I optimized it for the palette, I could have a quite different size. So one question is, depending on the encoder, would that change the behavior while performing the decoding? And the answer is yes. Uh, depending on the encoder, can actually spend 50% more time. But what is really interesting in this perf section is that uh, we were able to visualize quite a few functions, as inflate fast, adder 32, image frame, uh, set RGBA pre-multiply, as also uh, the PNG expand palette. So the candidates were three uh, from Zlib, CRC32 will explain pretty soon, one in blank, and one as part of libpng. So why Zlib? I think Zlib is a really interesting story because uh, it's used everywhere. It's used by Skia, it's used by Android, it's used by Crownet, that is used by, my understanding, quite a few Android apps. It's part of the kernel. It's an old code base, it was released in 95, and it's still written using Kernigan Rich C style. And as of today, uh, it lacked any kind of ARM specific optimizations. Uh, since, in, since 2014, Chromium Zlib has a few optimizations for compression targeting Intel. But uh, before we did this investigation, there were no optimizations targeting decompression. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the implementation. The other 32 checksum is similar uh, to, uh, I think it's the Fletcher checksum, but it's a little bit faster and a little bit more precise, but it's not as, uh, not as say, uh, good as CRC32 when it comes to collisions. And a very simplistic implementation would look like this, right? So basically have a loop, accumulate the first element, and calculate the second element depending on the first. But the issue is that uh, the Zlib adder 32 implementation was about seven times faster than a naive implementation. And it's a little bit hard to vectorize the computation where you have a second element that depends on the, calcul the calculus of the previous element. People who are familiar with CIND programming will recognize this. So we can see here a highly technical drawing from January 
uh, last year, where I was trying to address uh, the issue. And the solution was to use what is called like a TAPS, a vector with a constant that uh, represents, say, uh, the n variable uh, in the formula like over here. So, and actually, it was really nice to know the kind of assembly that was generated for this. And we used a Go, uh, com compiler explorer a lot, which, by the way, I highly recommend it. And even Intel also got some uh, love because um, this patch later was ported to Intel uh, by Noel Gordon, and that was included in Chrome M63. So we had an average gain around 12% for the coding PNGs. The second patch was Inflate Fast, that was implemented originally by Simon Hosey from our team. And a very high level idea is that uh, you perform uh, long or wide loads and stores using your instructions. In average, for the coding PNGs, we are around 20% faster. And that was, uh, that started shipping since Chrome M62. The following one was in Lead PNG. That was implemented by Richard Townsend. Uh, he is based in Cambridge, as the rest of the team. That was an average gain between 10 to 30%, but only if, say, the PNG was using a pallet. So the good news are uh, most of uh, those uh, doodles use it on uh, Google page. They are generally uh, transparent PNGs, and they also use pallets. And that is, uh, should be shipping on Chrome M66. We actually use it on this one, I think, was the VLOAD3 Neon Instruction. And the other candidate was inside of Blink, uh, basically. Uh, inside of Blink, there was there were some pixel manipulation. There was like a prime candidate for performing optimization, and that one was optimized by Jonathan. That's here. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, cool. And let's talk a little bit of CRC32. Even though it didn't show up as a, a hot spot while decoding PNGs is actually something really important when you are decompressing gzip content. And most of the web content up to these days, they are still served using a content encoding gzip. And that function alone provided us a 29% performance boost. Because on ARMv8, we have what's called crypto extensions. It's uh, a subset of, um, say, optional instructions, but most of uh, ARM device shipping these days, they have it. And in some cases, we are like uh, up to 10 times faster, 15 times faster than the highly optimized CRC32 implementation Zlib. And this also should be starting uh, to ship on Chrome M66. All right, so what was the combined impact of all those patches? So going back to the original uh, Parrot image, this is a Chrome trace of uh, uh, top of the tree like uh, four weeks ago, I think, where for decoding that image in a cold cache, that would take 172 milliseconds in what is considered like a cheap device, uh, Motorola X4, which has a Qualcomm, I think 630 SOC, which has like little cores, A53. So um, basically, this build was generated by removing all our optimizations, right? And when I re-enabled all the optimizations, oh, that was 59 milliseconds, which if you want to see in a more graphical way, that is almost three times faster, of course, for a single image. But uh, in average, because we have a few PNG uh, corpus where we run our benchmarking, we are between 1.6 times faster to 1.7 times faster on ARM. And some of those Zilli patches, they were, patched, uh, they were ported to Intel. And today, uh, Chromium Zilli is around 1.9 times faster 
than uh, vanilla Zlib for decoding, uh, for decompressing content. So since we are talking about Zlib, uh, you, can have uh, you can have two different wrappers around a given deflate um, content. One is uh, using what's called the Zlib format. That depends on the other 32 checksum. So since Chrome M62, because of uh, deflate, the inflate fast optimization, we are aware around uh, 12 to 18% faster. And since Chrome M63, because of the Adler 32 checksum, we were around um, 1.4 times uh, faster as median. But uh, people generally they don't use the Zlib format. People generally use the gzip format to serve web content. So because of the CRC32 that uses the ARM V8 crypto extension, we, we are average 1.6, median 1.5. This is using, uh, this is actually showing uh, the snappy uh, data corpora, or data corpus. So I think it's really interesting because Sometimes when people come up with some new compression library or a new compression algorithm, they always compare to canonical Zlib that lacks any kind of uh, CND optimization. If you consider that, that today Chromium Zlib is between 1.6 times faster to 1.9 times faster, I think if say you rerun those benchmarks comparing Zlib to other uh, compressors, you might see some different uh, results. And as part of this investigation, I worked with Chris Bloom to uh, add some new uh, image decoding performance bots as part of the infrastructure. So that is really nice because whenever we land a new optimization, we can uh, actually validate those performance gains in different platforms. And also that actually helped us to spot, I think two or three performance regressions, uh, I think, there was one patch where someone enabled something for ARM, some extra compiler option, and that triggered a regression of around 10%. So thanks to the bots, we were able to spot that. So uh, lessons learned. Uh, ARM cores can benefit a lot from new optimizations, but not only ARM cores, also Intel can benefit a lot from writing CD code. Even say an uh, old, uh, old code base as Zlib, where ha it has been like around forever, there might be still like really good uh, optimization opportunities left. So if there is say a, a given specific component in Chromium where there are say, um, people may be concerned about the performance, it's still worthwhile to have a look on it and say try to optimize it. Even, even if you have to spend some time you know, looking to assembly, but uh, still, uh, I think it's worthwhile. In some cases, we can have gains uh, up to three generations of silicon. I say up to because there is this kind of, uh, I would say, assumption that between a new model, you expect to have a 20% performance gain in average. So three generations, that would be like 60%, right? But as you guys uh, have seen on the slides, in some cases we are actually three times faster. Another thing that I think we learned on this investigation is that uh, definitely it pays up to work in a lower le level because well, it's like this. I mean, I was looking at Chrome and trying to optimize image decoding. So we had opportunities in Blink, then moving a layer down, we had opportunities in eBPNG and then moving another layer down, we had opportunities in Zlib. And I would say in this whole investigation, the upstreaming process was the most uh, time consuming part of the work. Because like uh, in one month we had other 32, in two months we had the inflate fast, in three months we had the initial version of the palette optimization. And when uh, we had clearance to go and optimize Blink, I think took what, like, uh, Jonathan was what, two weeks maybe? 
uh, around two weeks to optimize uh, the RGBA multi pre-multiply instead of blank. But if you guys noticed, the first patch was done by January 2017, and we were able to land, land it on Chrome in September or, or October. But good news are today um, the upstream process is much more uh, easier. And if, say, you guys have ideas about how to do this kind of low-level optimization in Zlib and libpng, uh, we would be more than happy to try to help out. So what comes next? Well, uh, when it comes to ARM, the decompression story is done. But we still have to do the compression, right? Uh, we have done some initial work in there, still not tested, but uh, it seems that we can easily have around 29% performance gain uh, doing compression, which I'm not so sure how important that is for Chrome. I heard this that sometimes the compositor may compress uh, some pre-compiled shaders when you have like a really low memory device, in that context might, might be useful. Or if, say, you have a HTML canvas, if, say, you generate a blob, a dump of the canvas content, you can export as both JPEG or PNG. In this case, you have to perform compression, so it might, might be uh, useful. Uh, since those op optimizations that have been shipping since, uh, some of them since Chrome M62, I think may make sense to port um, those optimizations to Android Zlib, because my understanding is that uh, an APK is uh, gzip compressed, so we could open those uh, files like 1.6 times faster, right? And finally, I mean, I'm not sure if uh, there is anyone from Firefox here. Anyone? Mozilla? Yay! I'm still, I'm still a Firefox user. Uh, I think might be interesting for people using Zlib to uh, migrate to Chrome on Zlib because Zlib is used as part of Chronet that has lots of uh, unit tests, is widely distributed as part of Chrome and also Android apps that use Chronet. Um, we have started adding uh, fuzzers into Chrome on Zlib. So I would say today, Probably uh, Chromium Zlib is the best tested Zlib around. Okay, so some special thanks. I'd like to thank ARM for sponsoring this research because I worked on this for basically like one year. I know other companies, they wouldn't have this kind of long-term view. So and for that, I'm really grateful. I'd also like to thank Google, especially Chris Bloom, because he helped with review, reviews, fuzzers, pathbots, and also uh, there was one case where the first optimization had to be reverted because Google Meet was uh, broken. But in the end, uh, the issue was with the Google Meet code, they were relying on some undefined behavior that changed after we uh, optimized the code. Also like to say thanks to my client. He's kind of a, a Cindy uh, expert. So in the CRC32 case, my first implementation was 10 times faster. So I was like, all right, you cannot do better than this. And he was like, well, but you are using CRC32W that works with, say, 32 bits. Why don't you use CRC32D that will work with 64 bits? So I, I just changed, say, the name of the function, the intrinsics that it would be using the ARM V8 instruction that was like twice as fast, <laughs> right? So that was really nice. Also Noel, because he uh, provided us tools like Zlib Bench and uh, Image Decoder Benchmark, and finally the Intel ports. So if, say, you guys have a MacBook, uh, PNG decoding will be faster today because of those ports. And finally, Leon, uh, scroll games, because basically we came with, say, some pretty nasty neon code, even though it was highly tested, and we asked him, hey man, what do you think about forking uh, libpng in Chrome so we can make it faster? So that is a tough decision to do, and since he is the owner of uh, Chromium, Zlib, uh, Chromium libpng, uh, he accepted the patch. We are working now trying to upstream those patches, 
we already submitted them upstream to all the projects. So the plans that eventually, at least on Leap Engine, I'm hopeful that we might be able to merge this patch, this optimization into uh, upstream uh, Leap Engine because they already have ARM specific optimizations. Zlib is another story. Um, I mean, like uh, two weeks ago, completed the one year since my first um, merge request into canonical Zlib, and I still haven't received any comment. So I'm not holding my breath on this one. Also like to thank um, the ARM team in Cambridge. We have Dave, Richard, Stephen, and Jonathan. Stephen um, is not here, he's in another room. And we have here Dave and Jonathan. And also uh, the previous uh, US team, um, while Simon and Amori decided to uh, go for greener pastures, uh, we used to work together, so um, I'm grateful to them. And finally, Compiler Explorer, which I think it's amazing too. I mean, I really love it. I mean, it's just perfect. I mean, you paste your code there, you can compile it to different compilers and targets. You can see the assembly is beautiful. Okay, so questions, and most important, I would like to hear which kind of feedbacks you guys have. I mean, I hope it was uh, interesting or awesome, I don't know. Any questions? Cosmology view. Would you mind to repeat the question? Uh, 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 yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, so, so uh, PNG is not the best format for uh, DSPs, uh, but uh, like uh, JPEG, uh, that, that does it get decoded on uh, on DSP on a Mali GPU, for example? Okay, cool. Well, actually, I consider the idea of say uh, what would be the benefits of trying to decode PNG in GPU, but PNG generally is used for, say, when you need like a small transparent icon or this kind of stuff. So I haven't measured, but I wouldn't be surprised if, say, you actually spend more time uploading this data to the GPU, performing the decode, and then go, coming back. JPEG specifically. I had a look on JPEG Turbo, but that is already highly optimized. So I'm, I, will not say that I will not say that it's impossible to optimize even more JPEG Turbo, but uh, I would be surprised to see this kind of gains. If you ask me today, probably GIF would be a good candidate for this kind of optimization work. But on the other hand, I have some hopes that maybe one day GIF will just go away. I don't like GIFs. Questions? Well, we still have like uh, six minutes, so I think I can show you guys some stuff. I mean, uh, <clears throat> all right, so I mentioned the compression, right? So uh, I have here a Chromebook, ARM Chromebook. So it's all about uh, dog fooding, right? And uh, if, say, I run, Zilli benchmarker in the snap test uh, data set. This is vanilla Zilib. I'm gonna see like a 23 megabytes uh, compression speed, right? And this is a, a patched version where we are around uh, 28. So that is about 20% performance gain. It doesn't have all the pets yet. So this is uh, one example where we could optimize it a little bit for compression. Uh, there is a, a hash that has to be calculated, and we can speed up uh, remarkably using Neon. This was originally uh, developed by a friend from the ARM team in Shanghai. And since then, I have been uh, running some validation on it. Uh, what else? Yeah, so basically compression on ARM is up for the taking. 
for Intel, my understanding is that uh, since 2014, uh, Intel guys have already done everything. So, okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, thanks for your time. <laughs>